that beep is so satisfying, don't you think? <laughs> the beep is that beep. Are we ready? Let's get a camera set. Quiet on set, please. Prepare for a take. Action. How are you? Doing good, how are you? I'm good. Are we going to pretend like we don't know each other? How are we doing this? Babe, it's been too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, me and Jake, we go way, mm. I think maybe 10 years. Yeah, more. I'm like 31 now, so probably a bit maybe more than that. 12. Oh my gosh, he knew me when I was like alive and kicking in the church. <laughs> Not so much anymore, but you know how it, you know, it happens. It happens, <laughs> yeah. So um, we go way back and I've always known you to mm. be a musician, singer, I remember we used to come to TNT, Yo. play the guitar, Yo. sing, <laughs> woo all the ladies. No, relax, relax, with, relax, With, with the whole Afrocentric babe, kind of, relax, you know? relax. No, it's true. Oh, they, oh it's that singer's no, voice. No, no, take so time. Do you Man never do about that, you know? I'm just, I'm... <laughs> you know that trying to act like you, you, you did? Anyway, that's, that's, how, that's what I've, I've always known you as, and sure. I always see you popping up on my social media feed you sure. growing from strength to strength to strength Very close. um how's it how's it been how's the journey been for you yeah I know that's a loaded question but yeah i mean <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's it's a straightforward question actually it's, it's been great i've um i saw something uh, online which said we all know people in school who are still trying to be rappers oh wow from school days Do you know what yeah, i mean and, yeah. I, and so for that reason reading that i i, I, I consider myself grateful to be making music um, full time um, here in this country. And yeah, I'm, I'm winning, I'm yeah, winning. Yeah, yeah. I've got two kids, I've got a gorgeous, um, gorgeous wife. Um, I've got a yard, I've got a roof over my head and I'm still making music in a pandemic. So I can't, I can't complain. How has it been for you though, as uh, a black male in this music world? In, is it, has it been hard to navigate or, you know, actually no, not really, not for me. It has been uh, a flurry of emotions, a flurry of disappointments and wins. It's been, especially as a black man, um, a British black man, mm. um, I found it at times really uh, tricky to navigate simply because uh, of the different narratives that constantly surround me right. at different points in my career. When I first started out, it was, um, I made music uh, aiming for certain circles, certain radio stations, certain, you know, um, and that was, that was the end thing. I came into this thing as a songwriter and as a songwriter, there was already, listen, you need to aim for certain radio stations, you need to aim for this, you need to aim for that. Mm. And I think I carried that into artistry. Um, I didn't mean to be an, a, a musician. Someone came to a session one day and said, hey mate, you, you can sing half good. You should probably try doing the, the music thing like the artist thing. Two years later, I was playing Glastonbury. Um, but I think from those days, I was very conflicted about uh, being authentically uh, a black British man. Right. Um, and so I left parts of my blackness out because I was trying to play a game which mm. actually wasn't mine to play. Yeah. And do you feel like now you are all black, if that makes sense? Yeah. That's, and that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the right question. That, to me, that's the right question. I, I am. I, I feel like it's, I've been doing this for a while now, maybe seven, eight years, mm. um, from when I first put out my first bit of music. And now I've, I realise I've got nothing to lose. I think um, I can tour the, I can tour Europe, I can tour America. Um, like I'm, I have my own fan base, and they trust me, um, mm. and they allow me to do what I'm doing and be authentically myself, and they're up for the ride. What? How would you describe your music? Because I would say I'm probably not getting the right terminology here, but I would say it's quite indie, mm. indie kind of vibe. Yeah, I think I started very much from that angle, right? As an indie singer songwriter. Yeah but the part I was neglecting was the soul part. And I grew up on everyone, everything from Motown, David Ruffin, Jimmy Ruffin, all the way through to Indie RE. Um, and so now, um, of recent, I've, I've started to lean into that, my soul upbringing, my gospel upbringing. Yeah. Um, I've sat in meetings uh, with, different, with different teams at different points in my career, and I've played demos which I've been working on and producing myself, and they said, yeah, is that leaning a bit too much urban? And I've, I've then followed that narrative and said, Oh yeah, you're right. You know, yeah. Okay, okay. Let me let me use it, lose that bass line, or and actually that's not right, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's an injustice yeah. to everything I've been brought up on, to my heritage as a as a West Indian, as a as an Antiguan. 
Um, and so I've had to change that narrative and uh, be holistically myself. When you was in that indie space, as a black man, because I would say it's predom quite predominantly white yeah. people in that type, in that genre, was it easier because you was kind of like the token black guy? Mm. Or did you find it harder? Which, or, or was it a bit of both? Do you know what? I actually thrived. Right. Um, I actually, I found that I thrived because actually that is a part of me as well. Mm. I love I love indie. I, one of the records which I grew up on in my dad's old Volvo saloon when he used to drive us around as a family was Paul Simon's Graceland album. Right. And as a singer-songwriter, Paul Simon is epic. He still is. Yeah. And um, and so in that community of artists here in the UK, um, it was great because it was a part of me. But again, I was neglecting a crucial part of me where I started from. Um, and so yeah, I'm a, a combination of being black and British is is to be appreciated completely, not just in part, you know? Mm. So in September, you uh, appeared on The Late Show. How was that? That's mad. It was Do you mad. ever have like, like, what's going on here? <laughs> Moments. Um, yeah, yeah, I do, <laughs> big time. I think it was, it was great, but what was even great for me was doing the school run the next morning. Because <laughs> it just puts things in perspective. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All right, bro, calm down, relax yourself. Get on with life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a moment. Appreciate the moment. Celebrate the moment. But know what's important. Do you um, do you operate in a lot of black spaces, or do you feel that we're underrepresented still within the music industry? Because I've spoken to some other guests, and they said, you know, they grew up around a lot of black people. They had the they got a, they had a lot of black mentors, and then some mm. others have said no. Like the environments they've been in, there wasn't a lot of black people, so they felt out of place. Kind of what you were saying, they felt like they had to kind of dim their blackness down a little bit so that they could fit in. Mm. But what's your experience been growing up with music? Not so much the label side and all of that. Yeah, I think my where I came from was being around a lot of black people. My my uncle was signed to Island Records. Uh, in a reggae band years ago. I grew up around a lot of musicians. Um, actually, as a songwriter, I was hanging out with uh, some great producers, Rhymes. J5 used the same space I was in at one point. Right. And some really great people who are literally impacting and shifting culture as we know it musically. Um, so I grew up around my own. Right. Um, but I also grew up around uh, a, lo a lot of white people. Mm. Um, so when I went to uni, I went to university in Cheltenham. Right. Um, and that was, I was the only black male on my whole campus, who's mm. like in the whole campus of people living there, I was the only black male. And, um, and that was good for me uh, because actually I'm in Britain and this is, this is the culture that we're in. I had an equal level of input just in terms of cultures. Yeah, I get what you mean. Because we were saying as well that young people getting into music, sometimes they don't see themselves in certain you know, they might see they might see a rapper. We see mm. rappers. We see you know we see that a lot, mm. hip hop or pop or R and B. But certain other sectors, classical, even like indie, I don't really know a lot of. Well, I think now indie's actually becoming the cool thing to do. I feel <laughs> as if it, you know, everyone kind of's got that uh, sound. What's going. Like, did I get? Did I get? It's like that sound. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's like that. Uh, <laughs> that it's like pain, but. Soft wow. pain. Wow. That's how I feel indie is. It's like that soft pain. I can't oh, take it wow. no more. Wow. Hey, listen, you, you should do a record, you know. I you know, no, I should. That's what Babe, I've not said earlier. Don't muck about, you know. Um, how, I can't even remember what the question is. You throw me <laughs> off now. Jeez. <laughs> Can you remember what the question is? Yeah, it's the amount of black people you're seeing in these different Yeah, genres. like there's not, not a lot of representation. Sure. What effect do you think that has on young people? Do you think there needs to be more or... How can we change that? Um, collaboration brings about innovation. I think if we're willing to integrate more, mm. we'll be willing to express more. Right, yeah, uh, yeah, And yeah. variety. Yeah. So for me, one of the things that really uh, jumpstart, well, helped me develop in the early days was hanging out with uh, my promoter's crew, which is Communion. Right. They looked after Ben Howard and and uh, Dan Scroll, uh, Dan Kroll, and a couple of, and a load of other, like the Staves, yeah. who are great singer songwriters. Um, and I used to go to their club nights, I used to go to and hang out with that crew of people. And that really impacted me and encouraged me to develop that side of my artistry. Right, okay. Um, in the same way, 
um, if you're a young white artist, hanging out or listening to certain music impacts and feeds black creativity right, right, within yeah. you, you know, or black originated creativity. And I think integration and collaboration brings about innovation. So you play the guitar as well. How did you get into playing an instrument? Is that the only instrument you play? Did you play the piano? A little bit, badly. You, he's, you play, used to play in TNT it's sometimes. So just just, just <laughs> all that energy, trying to play it down. Um, see, this is what happens when you know someone, you got all these little drums. Well, I swear you uh. used it. Um, so you, the guitar and the keys, how did you get into that? Um, my first instrument was drums. Okay. And I started as a session drummer playing for different pop and rock acts. I played a little bit for Duffy and uh, a couple other people. And I, there was a need, particularly like growing up in church, when you grow up in small churches, like someone needs to play this, uh, you just jump on and you figure it out. <laughs> yeah, and Auntie yeah. so-and-so is just saying, yes, I will enter. Yeah. And you just, me, 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 and you just crack on. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're growing up from that, you just, you just crack on, you adjust and you learn. And actually, you don't realise at the time, but you're getting a head start in musical intuition and, mm. um, and just, yeah, following your senses when it comes to musical progression. And yeah, that's, that's how I ended up playing other instruments. So did you then ask, did you ever study it put as a... No, know, I studied marketing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I studied marketing and then I was a marketing officer manager for a couple of years, um, a non-profit marketing. Um, and then I ended up doing songwriting. So I ended up working with some friends, Cynthia Revo, uh, did a record for Blue. Um, I just said Cynthia Revo, like, no, it's friends, Cynthia Revo. No, babe. Nominated no, do that. Oscar. No, babe, whatever. don't do that. This is, listen. But we knew each other around that time. Yeah, I know, so but the way you just said Cynthia Arriva, like, Cynthia Arriva is just, it's Cynthia Arriva, do you know what I mean? She's a sister and she's smashing it. 100%, I love yeah, her. She's smashing it and I respect her. So, I, yeah, but yeah, so we, like, I, yeah, I, I grew up around different people and yeah, that's how I ended up being where I am. So, I mean, so far, it sounds like you've had quite a nice journey. You know, obviously you said you've, but have you ever, do you ever feel like you've faced um, discrimination within the, within the music industry? No. You don't think you have? No. Really? I feel like, as I mentioned before though, I have allowed myself to, to grab a hold of narratives which weren't healthy. Right. In terms of what music gets how far. As in, if I do non-urban music, I get further than if I do urban music, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And those have been conversations behind closed doors. But you do you not think that's a part, do you, do you not think that's discrimination? You know what it is? I feel like because I allowed that narrative and I actually fed into that narrative because mm. I was naive, I feel like partly I'm to blame. Interesting. It's weird, I, I, I don't, the reason why I say it's not discrimination as well is because I can't point the finger at someone. I can't say it's your fault when I allowed it. I tolerated it. And so I feel like now in my, in, in my journey, my responsibility is to help to educate other artists uh, with similar heritage um, and to undo the stuff which I've, I've entertained coming into this music thing. Do you not feel though that even there's maybe this internal thing within us sometimes as black people that, like you said, we kind of entertain certain ideas because we've been made to feel that we have to entertain those certain ideas. I'd agree with that. So it's like, even though you went along with it, you were made to feel, I, I have to do this because I want to get to the next level. So now let me kind of take on that. But they are, but their advice is coming from a place of discrimination. Yes. Um, I think my, my paradigm came from an observation before I encountered those people. Okay. So I, my mind, being a songwriter, I thought to myself, you know what? There's a game you have to play here if you're going to, for example, I can't remember the last time I saw a black male singer at number one position in this country that's from the UK. Simon Webb, Tyra Cruz, who? Yeah. Who's a singer, yeah. not a rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then with a female, who, Jamelia, Gabrielle? True that. Who's, who's a singer. Mm. And so when I observe those things, because I think it's important to do, have a sense of qualitative market research when you're engaging the, the industries like the music industry. When I observed that, I said, okay, there's a game that needs to be played here in order to get a bit further than right. where we're going. Yeah, yeah. So if you feel like you've not 
experienced discrimination then what do you think of you know the movements like we had blackout tuesday you know all of these things where people are saying we're not represented this is how it feels blah blah blah, blah. what's your take on that then i think those are completely justified and i do think that those um, like blackout trees, etc. I think it's completely necessary because it highlights the systemic racism that's within industry. Right. Um, but not everyone has the same experience. Mm, true. And so that's why I say I wasn't discriminated against. I didn't have someone um, overtly say, "Hey, you're not coming through this door. I'm a gatekeeper. You're not coming here." Rather, I was observing systemic racism and the things that were in place, mm. and I fed myself a narrative which was unhealthy. Whereas I know there are others who have blatantly been told or, or given rubbish excuses as say a black female yeah. uh, in the game that they can't, yeah, it's not quite working. And the obvious reason is because they're a dark skinned black female. Mm, mm, mm. So what do you think about the state of UK music at the moment? Do you think we're going in a good direction? I think we've always been going in a good direction, but what I think has changed is people are starting to realize how much black people impact and influence culture. Right. And so now that's been highlighted it's being celebrated mm. um, and it's overdue. Um, and I really believe that things will be different for my son. By the time he gets, he's, he's four, by the time he gets to like his 20s, I think there's going to be way more scope for opportunity. I think the gatekeepers are going to look different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah, people in power, I think there's just going to be way more scope and appreciation for black culture in this country. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think. I, I believe that we will see more male and female singers, maybe an indie person, maybe, you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I, I, think, I think because a truth has been highlighted, a truth can now be embraced and thus celebrated. And, that, and now we can see development and progression in an industry which is far overdue it. So you, you, mentioned, are you, gonna, you mentioned your children, are you gonna teach them an instrument? Do you think it's important that they know an instrument? I mean, my mum thought it was really important. I mean, I didn't, I, I've, the piano, she really tried, and it just wasn't for me, you know? <laughs> because I just don't have the patience to, or the concentration to keep doing something. But I do feel like playing an instrument does teach you certain things, you know, persistent, concentration, you know, never giving up, all those good stuff. Are you still playing the piano then? No, so I'm I not. Said, what does that mean? No, but I'm saying I wish I did because I right, probably right. would be more patient. Because I literally, I'm, I'm the most impatient person ever. That's, and I, maybe if I just stuck at playing the, but are you going to, especially because you're quite musical, no? Um, I think I will, I, I, I'm more, my parents decide to sit back, observe, see where they lean to and then feed that. So right. I'm not going to force anything on them. Do you feel that music should be a part, a, a more stronger part of the curriculum in schools? Before we get there, I think history needs to be fully expanded upon in our curriculums in schools. Right. Before we go into music and sports and the obvious things that black people are known for thriving in, let's go down to what's actually important, which is heritage, history, understanding the progression of why we've come to this point, understanding why systemic racism has been, become so intricate throughout the education system, throughout the music industry. Yeah. I think we need to, as black people, we need to start speaking about what should be prioritised right. in order to make uh, the, the landscape a bit fairer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. But even in that, we've been teaching the history, our history. Music is heavily ingrained in that. Mm. Do you get what I mean? From mm. slavery and all mm. of that. So it kind of, I wouldn't say goes hand in hand, but it is a part um, of our history, which, like I was saying before, the fact that we have such a heavy influence in music and when it's been taught in schools, we're kind of left out of it, is, I think it's, it's, quite, it's quite a sad, it sad is. thing. If you can show someone where they're coming from, coming from holistically, you can help them to stand in who they are presently. I think that's important. I've got a question for you. Go ahead. I mean, I've had loads of questions. Loads of questions. But this one, how was it working with India Irie. Mad. Ugh, I mean, she's so just... Mad. So how mad. How was it? Because so you mad. mentioned her earlier that you grew up and you listened to her music. So yeah. how was it actually to work with her? So mad. I was, uh, yeah, I was, I, was, I was intimidated. I can't even lie. I was super intimidated. And, um, how did that come about? I don't do this. I don't, I don't do this. But I slid into her DMs. Is, see, that's, guys, that's why you should slide into Listen, people's DMs. Listen, live your best life, you know. See? Take them risks, babe. That is so <laughs> sick. And what, what did you say? I really love your music. Let's do something. I, I, I basically said, hey, listen, I've respected you from whenever, 
People over this side of the pond respect you. I'm just a little singer-songwriter, then a little ting. If you're interested, hit me back. If not, I hope I've caused no disrespect. Two days later, she messaged me back and said, I've been listening to all your music. I've been watching all your videos. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Mm. Did you bust a little tear? No, I screamed like a little girl. Oh my gosh, I would. Don't judge me. No, I'm, not, I'm not judging you at all. I would literally, I would, I would do the same. That's like me messaging Oprah and being like, yo, yeah. we'd love to have a sit down with her. Yeah, yeah. And she goes, I've been watching all your yeah. interviews. <laughs> I would love to. I'd be like, yo. <laughs> so um, what have you got? What have you got coming up next? What's the plans? I've just released an album, which okay. I made during lockdown 2020 March. Um, so from then, I was working on something from home in my spare room. So I put that out, and that's what India's on, Sam Henshaw, Mumu Fresh, right. um, Yuna, and a couple of other artists. Um, so I've just released that, and um, I've also just made, I've just exec produced my first short film. Nice. So I'm going to be releasing that uh, in about a month's time, um, featuring some incredible actors. Um, he did, he did. Jake didn't hit me up for No, but babe, I asked you if you're on the Matt. acting team and you said... It's said, yeah, but it's gone now. Oh, 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 okay, The, the okay. whole film is gone. You've oh. re- it's coming out. Oh, oh, okay. So you didn't actually... It's oh. there, so we'll do this off camera. Okay, it's fine, okay, don't great, great. Worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, so I'm excited about that. Just, yeah, made my first film. Um, and, and then other than that, just working on new bits. Nice. So what do you... Obviously, we're here today um, because of Blim. So what do you actually think of... The initiative, do you think it's enough? Do you think it's needed? I definitely think it's needed. I definitely think um, it's, it's, a great, it's a great step of progression. Um, I think there have been other people and organisations who have tried to start this conversation and have, yeah, and have started this conversation over time. And I think this is, now's the time for them. Yeah. And I think influence is more powerful than profile. There are people who have profiled who've tried to do the conversation and tried to change things systemically. Mm. But I feel like Blim is in a position uh, to bring about influence and change systemic systemic issues from the inside out right, in terms yeah. of the industry. I think you touched on a good point as well. I think people are more ready now to have this conversation, Absolutely. especially with the way, you know, the climate of the world mm. and people are open to now hearing before we would speak and often our voices would just get shut down Mm. and now it's almost like now you can't we're just going to keep speaking and now you have to listen and if you want stats we're going to give you stats too do you get what i mean and i think that's what i think a lot of times you know sometimes as black people we give our opinions a lot which is fine but then people don't want to believe us it's always a question. Oh, is it? Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure about yeah. that? Are you, are you sure? Yeah. Maybe it wasn't that. Or no, but yeah, I know yeah, like yeah. five black people that played the guitar. Are you yeah, sure? Yeah. You know, yeah. like, I'm sure there's... Have you had one of these conversations? Uh, all the time. <laughs> but now, like, with, with surveys and data, you can't argue with Absolutely. that. Do you get what I mean? And that's why I think these things are really, really, really important. And I think it's the right time to have this conversation. Absolutely. So where, where can the people find you? Instagram, I am Jake Isaac. I am jkisaac.com. Um, have a little Google, see what comes up. Hopefully it'll be me and you can find me there. There's going to be best stuff. I lo- <laughs> Everyone that I've had today, you're all established in your own right. You're all, you're all successful. You're all making ways and you've all been so humble. Oh, yeah, just uh, Jake Isaac, like nothing special. Oh, why did you do this? I no, but it's true. You've, got, you you've done Glastonbury. You've done all these things and everyone, uh, maybe it's like a creative thing that all creatives do we just play down our, our achievements i think when you're in it what it's a different it? it's a different vibe you don't see it as a big thing do you think though i mean i'm obviously going to bring this back to race do you think that's a black thing that we often don't like to talk about our achievements because we kind of be made to feel less than or that we shouldn't be in certain spaces or that we shouldn't achieve certain things i think it's more to do with british culture Right. In America, if you say, so what do you do? They'll be like, yes, and I've done this, and I'm this. True, I'm... true, true. But in Britain, nobody likes the big head. Nobody likes the true. ego. Yeah. So we'll play it down over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and it's if you know, you know. So I think it's more of a cultural thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Well, it's been, it's been lovely catching. Absolutely I feel like this lovely. is like a catch-up, you know? Absolutely. Well, it's been lovely catching up with you. Thanks Guys, you. you know what to do. We need you to go over to blim.org.uk forward slash change. And you can take part in the survey anonymously. And we need you to do this so that we can make a change. Thank you. Bye. Unbelievably, there is no existing data on the experience of black professionals and musicians in the music industry here in the UK.
This needs to change. In order to change the narrative, this needs to change. Complete a survey at blim.org.uk forward slash change.